Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Sunday Fireside Chat on Facebook Live with the United Church of Christ in Abington. My name is Reverend Christy Coburn, and I'm blessed to be the pastor of UCC Abington. Today is the third Sunday in the season of Lent, a very special season in the church year during which we reflect and pray and open our hearts to transformative love. Today, I extend a warm welcome to all of you. Whether you've been with us for a while or are visiting today, you are welcome here. Will you join with me in prayer? In trust and confidence, dear God, we call on your name, eager to know you more fully and serve you more faithfully. We seek your word for us this day because we want to grow strong in our faith. We seek to teach and to live in such a way that our children and their children will be drawn to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'd like to spend a couple minutes with our kids. So if you have kids out there, bring them on over. And I'll get our friend Lucy to jump up here. She waits anxiously every Sunday for her moment here. Well, hi, friends. So Lucy here has some rules she has to follow. One rule is that she can't take dirty tissues out of the trash and rip them to shreds like some dogs like to do. She's pretty good with this rule, although sometimes she just can't help herself. And we have to yell at her, which is really hard to do because she's so cute. Another one of her rules is that she can't go to the bathroom on the floor. Lucy's very good with this rule. She knows that she has to go outside to do her business. And speaking of outside, when we take Lucy outside, she can't run in the street. That's another important rule to help keep her safe. And she's pretty good at following this rule. You probably have rules to follow too. Just like Lucy, you're probably not allowed to run in the street, are you? There's a good reason for a lot of our rules. Rules are meant to keep us safe and happy. There are a lot of rules in the Bible. Today, we're going to read the Ten Commandments. And those are rules in, that we read about in our Old Testament. These are some important rules, and you've probably heard most of them, hopefully all of them. Sometimes people think rules are mean. But like I said, rules are meant to keep us happy and safe. They're meant to help us become mature people. And if we remember that, then the rules can be much easier to follow. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for giving us rules to follow to keep us safe and happy. Help us to be good followers of Jesus' rule to love each other always. Amen. Now, before you go, I know you want another treat, don't you? Because you're such a good rule follower. Take out your Bible crossword puzzle. I'm going to give you two more clues today. So your first clue is going to be number 17 going down. 17 down is the branches of this tree were waved when Jesus went into Jerusalem. And if you're not sure what the answer to that is, you can look in the Gospel according to John in the 12th chapter, verses 12 and 13, and you'll see the answer there. Are you licking my book? Your second clue is number 18 going down. And the clue is, this was the sign of the covenant between God and Noah. And if you're not sure what the answer to that is, you can look in Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 through 17. Genesis 9, 12 through 17. All right. Thanks so much, Lucy, for helping us out today. You want one more treat for the road? All right, why don't you go see Caroline? Our scripture reading for today, <laughs> we actually have two scripture readings. The first one is from the Old Testament book of Exodus in the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. And this will likely be a familiar passage to hopefully all of you. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, 
whether in the form of anything that's in heaven above or that's on earth below or that's in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you should, shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your, in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor, neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew in the 22nd chapter, verses 36 through 40. Listen for the word of God. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May God add blessing to both of these readings of the word. If you were with us here on Facebook for the first two Sundays of Lent, you already know that we're taking a unique and special approach to Lent this year. Traditional approaches to Lent can be dark and somber, focused on giving up enjoyment and happiness as a way of seeking forgiveness. We've taken another path this Lenten season, one that focuses on healing and hope. We're not giving up joyful things for Lent, but instead we're giving up the negativity in our hearts and in our lives in order to live more joyfully and more faithfully. Now, if you're practicing the dark and somber approach to Lent and you get to week three and you read the Ten Commandments, your first thought might be, yes, Lord, we're all aware by now that we've broken your laws and strayed from your ways like lost, like lost sheep. Can you please cut us some slack? If, however, your Lenten journey is one of throwing out cynicism and gloom and replacing it with hope and love, then you might read the Ten Commandments differently. In light of this, you might begin to see the Ten Commandments not as a burden, but as a gift. You may read the, the Commandments with a soft heart. And you may see their wisdom as an opportunity to grow deeper in relationship with God and with Jesus and with others. The Ten Commandments given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai describe a vision of how the relationship between God and people should work. Now, let's think for a moment about what's going on here. God has been helping the Israelites along their difficult journey. God has led the people through the Red Sea, out of slavery in Egypt, given them food called manna, or bread from heaven, and brought them up to Mount Sinai. God has been a constant present and help for the people, showing them great love and care. So these Ten Commandments are a gift from God to the people of Israel. They've come so far together, and now God is giving them the gift of these commandments. So what makes these commandments a gift? Let's take a look. The Ten Commandments are separated into two sections. The first section is intended to guide our relationship with God. The second is intended to guide our relationships with each other. 
all the commandments together outline the basic expectations of human behavior to help communities focus on what's right and good instead of falling into patterns of destructive living. These commandments provide encouragement for healthy and proper love of God and of neighbor. So let's look at the commandments in light of our Lenten theme, one of giving up negativity in order to gain hope. You shall have no other gods before me and shall not make graven images. Well, in other words, give up on unhealthy dependence on material things that call for your attention, particularly the things that take your attention away from God. There's so much that can take us away from our relationship with God, and I sympathize with that. I know I'm pulled in many different directions each and every day. Our computers, iPhones, tablets, TVs, our lists of things to do, our need to be perfect at it all, these are just some of the things that can pull us away from God. And I don't advocate for giving up, sorry, on technology. After all, where would we be in this pandemic without it? I do advocate, however, for the responsible balance that allows us time to enjoy the things of this world because we have good, strong relationship with the Creator. Giving up on an unhealthy dependence on our stuff will give you time for a healthy and meaningful relationship with God. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Give up swearing, but not just swearing, harsh words. Our harsh tongues and critical thoughts make us look foolish and uncaring, and that's not who we are as disciples of Christ. By giving up swearing and harsh language, you'll gain a cleaner perspective on the world around you, and you'll begin to be seen as one who shares God's love with others. Honor your father and mother. In other words, give up telling yourself that you're self-made. I know that for some, this commandment is hard, and for good reason. I've been blessed in my life to have a good mother and a good father. But some parents come with issues, and some come with a lot of issues. Still, I think this commandment is a reminder to us that we stand on the shoulders of others, whether our parents, grandparents, or other positive figures who've come before us. We're a part of one another, for better or worse, and what we do with that interconnectedness matters. By giving up believing that we're self-made, we begin to see how deeply connected we are to all of creation, and we gain a sense of mutual love and helpfulness in our call to be disciples of Christ. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. In other words, give up your busyness. Our Jewish friends do this well. We should take note. When we stop working for a time, we, give, we gain a new perspective on the world around us and we begin to see the beauties of the world that we don't otherwise see. When we rest our bodies and our minds, we rest our, we rest our spirits as well. And that rest is essential in keeping ourselves healthy and energized for ministry and life. Now, the next few commandments, in some way, speak for themselves. You shall not kill, commit adultery, or steal. For the most part, these seem like basic rules of society, life, and relationships. But at their heart, they go a little deeper. These commandments are about giving up the things that break down communities and relationships, and instead recognizing that each one of our fellow human beings is a child of God and a gift of God each bearing the image of God. For example, it's one thing to not, not to literally kill another human being, but nor should you be engaging in behavior that can kill a person's spirit. So while killing, adultery, and stealing may seem like sins that are out of your realm, I think they deserve a second thought from all of us. Because in giving up things that break down communities, we gain so much love. You shall not bear false witness. In other words, give up lying. Again, pretty simple and straightforward. 
Not sure I need to explain to you why it's important not to lie, so much as to remind you that speaking the truth in love is always a better way of life. When we open lines of communication with one another, we open our connection to each other's hearts and souls. When we give up skirting around issues and instead speak the truth in loving ways and respect each other's differences, we gain, a healthy, we gain healthy and meaningful relationships in ways that are not otherwise possible. Finally, you shall not covet. Give up resentment and jealousy and rejoice with one another. Coveting is not only about admiring from afar and wishing you could have what you don't. When we give up coveting, we give up feeling envious of others and down on ourselves. And instead, we replace those feelings with feelings of joy for another's well-being. So in reading the Ten Commandments through our new lens, we can see that all that we gain and what does Jesus have to say about all this? Well, when asked about the greatest commandment, Jesus unites the, the two parts of the Ten Commandments, summarizing the whole law and gospel. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. One great commandment that's the heartbeat of all the other commandments. A commandment so simple that at its heart, it's at the heart of who we are and how we are to behave with God, with each other, and with ourselves. A commandment that focuses our hearts on healing and hope, forgiveness, joy, and love. So it may seem like the Ten Commandments are an outdated list of rules and laws, but I encourage you to pay attention to them on your Lenten journey and always, because they offer a lot more to us than it might seem at first glance. They offer us an opportunity to give up negativity in our hearts and in our lives in order to live more joyfully and with more faithfulness and love. Amen. And now as we prepare to join together at our electronic table, I invite you, if you haven't already, to go get something to eat and something to drink. Your communion meal doesn't have to be bread and grape juice. It can be anything you have available in your home. The food and drink you choose doesn't matter to Jesus, and it doesn't matter to me either. What matters is what it symbolizes for you in your heart. We come to the table today not as individuals separated by distance, but as a community united in heart and soul. Sharing the bread and cup together, Christ makes us one united in hope, peace, joy, and love. No matter who you are or where you are on the journey of life, you are welcome here with us. May your heart be lifted in hope. May your spirit be lifted in joy. May your life be filled with peace, and may you always know the power of love. Today we remember Jesus who on the night before he died, took bread and broke it and gave thanks to God, saying to his friends, each time you share this bread, I can't even break it, do so in remembrance of me. <laughs> in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Each time you share this cup together, do so in remembrance of me. Now I invite you to take your bread and your cup and say with me, the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together in hope. Our deacon of the day forgot to put juice in the cup, so we're going to improvise here. Oh, here you go, Lucy. <laughs> Will you pray with me? 
We thank you, God, for this special meal that we have shared together. Although we are apart, this meal and our faith connect our hearts more deeply than ever. Thank you for the hope Christ gives to us today and always. Amen. So I have a few prayers to share with you this morning before we join together in our pastoral prayer. First, I received a message, an email this week from Jen Skarinka, and she's asked me to pray for her family, for her mom specifically, who's having uh, surgery, actually I think it was a couple of days ago, to remove a malig malignant melanoma. So prayers that they were, um, that the surgery goes well and that they're able to get everything out. And prayers for her dad, who found out he has a complex cyst on his kidney that needs to be removed. So praying that it's not cancer. It's certainly been a challenging year for the Skarinka family um, with all of their trips back and forth to Walter Reed to help take care of Paul. Um, you know, they're a strong family, they're good people, and I know that they can get through this, but they're going to need your support and love and prayers. I'd also like you to keep in your prayers Marguerite Lee, who's having surgery this week. Prayers that her surgery goes well and her recovery goes smoothly. I'd also like you to pray for my cousin, um, Ricky Williams' fiance, Shonda. I just found out moments ago that she had a heart attack this past week. So um, she's home and resting and thankful for all the love and support. So please keep her in your prayers. And I would also like to ask for prayers for the family of Norma Clark, who died peacefully yesterday. Um, I had the opportunity to go visit with Norma. Um, I haven't done many visits during this pandemic for safety reasons to keep everybody um, safe and healthy, but um, when her family knew that the end was near for her, they asked me to come and visit. So I was able to visit with her um, on Friday and she died peacefully yesterday. So I'll be sending out information this week about um, the celebration of her life. That will be this week. Finally, I would like you to keep in your prayers Facebook content. I saw something on, uh, recently on Facebook that disturbed me to my core. It was a post that was politically disparaging, cruelly identifying an entire political pot party as murderous, hateful, and racist. It bothered me that this message was posted, but what bothered me more was that it was posted by someone I know and someone I love, and it was loved by someone else who I know and love. I understand that you are free to post anything you want on Facebook within Facebook's limitations, but I encourage you Please, don't post things that are hateful and mean. Post beauty, post art, post care, laughter, and love. Post pictures of your family, or cute kittens, or wholesome jokes. Please, my friends, I understand there's a lot of political strife and angst in our country right now, but don't let it get the best of you. Don't let it entangle you in a web of hatred and evil. There is a time for important discussion. There's a time even for heated debate. Our differences are to be celebrated, even as we work together to find peaceful solutions to every situation that arises. Facebook and social media are not the place to spread hatred and anger. In fact, no place is the place for that. As Christians and as caring and loving people, I encourage you always and only to spread love. Will you pray with me? God of love, we are listening for your call today. We open our minds, hearts, eyes, and ears knowing that you lead us away from our dependence on things and toward a relationship with you. We take that risk because deep in our hearts we long for that relationship. As we lift up prayers for all those on our prayer list today, we also lift prayers for our community. We, like the Israelites, want to live the gift of your commandments in order to do the good work of your Son, Jesus Christ, in the world. Help us in that endeavor. 
guide us in our thoughts and actions that we might love and serve you better. All this we ask in the name of our Savior. Amen. And I invite you now to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So before we close Facebook today, I have a couple of announcements and some other things to share. First, our beautiful church steeple has been lit for the month of March by Leah and Elijah Christ in, order of, in, in honor of Elijah's mother, Sharon, who celebrates her birthday this month, and in honor of Stephen and Annie Nugent's 22nd wedding anniversary on March 13th, and by Amanda Feldman, in honor of all women who have suffered the loss of a child, have suffered a miscarriage, or have suffered with infertility. In honor of Women's History Month, Amanda wanted to bring light to this unique pain that far too many endure. And more importantly, the strength and courage they show when they battle through it. Second, I humbly remind you that our church relies on your gifts and offerings to make ministry happen. So if you can give a gift or offering or make a regular pledge to our church, we would be deeply grateful. Your gifts and offerings allow UCC Abington to help care for our community with God's love. To give electronically, you can go to our website at uccabington.org, or you can mail a donation to the church at P.O. Box 2025 in Abington. My third announcement is about chowder. As you know, we were not able to hold our annual chowder suppers this year, but Ron Howe is still making our famous chowder to sell takeout style. Ken has coordinated a very smooth and nearly hands-free system. So here's how it works. You can fill out an order form, which you can find here on Facebook or in the weekly e-bulletin, or you can email your order to the church or call Ken with your order. At your specific pickup time, drive into the upper parking lot of the church and you'll be greeted in your car um, and have your chowder delivered. Please be prepared to pay by exact change or check again so that we can minimize hand-to-hand -hand contact. The chowder is $5 for a 16 ounce cup. And remember, your order needs to be in by 5 p.m. on Thursday so we know how much chowder to make. So, um, Ken's given me some statistics. I know that's surprising to those who know him. He says, on, uh, during week one, we had 32 orders for a total of 101 chowders. We had 21 leftover, which we, uh, we sold all of at the Legion for a total of 122 chowders. During week two, we had 38 orders for a total of 110 chowders, 19 leftover that we sold at the Legion for a total of 129 chowders. So thank you for your generous support of our takeout chowder this year. This is certainly different in this pandemic world, but it is a step back toward normalcy. Now I want to tell you about our Lenten Mission Project. This year we will be supporting Birthday Wishes, an organization that organizes birthday parties for homeless children. Our job will be to collect birthday gifts for children who range in age from 1 to 17. All you need to do is pick out a new item and drop it off at my house by March 27th and we'll dedicate them on Palm Sunday. So there's also a couple of other options for you. You can check out the Birthday Wishes Amazon wish list at their website, birthdaywishes.org. Um, if you click on the New England wish list, you can have your gift sent directly to Birthday Wishes. You could also have it sent directly to my house, or you can have it sent to your house and then you can bring it over to me for delivery. This is a great project, and as I've said before, our children usually lead our Lenten mission project, so we're helping them out this year by helping other children for them. So one last thing I have to share today. <laughs> one year ago today, 
we worshipped together in our sanctuary. It was March 8th, the second Sunday of Lent. We sang the old rugged cross and what a friend we have in Jesus, and I preached a sermon about Sabbath and the importance of taking time to rest and pray. During our offering, we put spare change into little plastic Easter eggs to help our children with their Lenten mission project. We prayed during prayer time for people and healthcare workers who were dealing with this thing called coronavirus. And believe it or not, when we closed our worship that day, we sang the hymn, God be with you till we meet again. Not knowing that that would be our last time together in the sanctuary for more than a year. It's been a long and challenging year to say the least, but we've adapted well. It's certainly not the same. We miss our sanctuary, we miss being together, we miss passing the peace, we miss brunch worship, we miss seeing our children and youth. But given all the challenges, we've done remarkably well as a church community. We've continued to worship here on Facebook Live. We hold monthly meditations and healing worship services. The trustees and council have continued to meet by conference call to take care of our building, our budget, and most importantly, each other. We've kept in touch through email, text message, phone call, cards, notes, and care packages. You've been diligent and faithful about wearing your mask and keeping your distance, but also about being generous with your pledges, offerings, and gifts, and participating in our monthly mission projects. You've stayed positive most days and supported one another on the off days. And you've trusted in the resurrection hope that would carry us through this pandemic. Hi. <laughs> And we've met Lucy. God be with you till we meet again. I get it, until we physically meet again in our sanctuary, in our parish hall, in our passing of the peace, in our coffee hour. God be with us all until we are physically together again. But I think we have to add in the word physically, until we are physically together again. Because spiritually and emotionally and even technologically, we've been together all along. Nothing has separated us from each other or from the love of God or from the service of Jesus Christ. You've not let anything stop you from being the church together, not even a pandemic. I have faith that we will get back together physically. We will be together again soon. Things are moving in the right direction, and hopefully they'll continue that way. And as for the people we've welcomed into the fold of our worship and mission, who've o who we've only met electronically, we will continue to welcome and embrace you. We will continue with the technology that allows us to worship together, even from as far away as Connecticut, Tennessee, and Florida, from where some of our Sunday morning electronic congregation joins us. But as for being together, we were never really apart. The love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit has kept us together and brought more people into the fold of our love than ever before. And for that, even in the midst of a challenging pandemic, we can give thanks to God. Go now in peace and follow the path of Jesus. Live with faith, hope, and love remembering always that the promises of God are for you and for me and for all. Amen. Playing from Ken's iPhone.